My guest today is Angela Dugan. Angela, how are you? Good. How are you, David? I'm doing great. I want to talk to you about these chickens that you're raising in your backyard. <laughs> uh, you do have chickens in your backyard. I do. I do. Tell I have me really two quickly about chickens. that. Uh, so Betsy and Gertrude, um, they are backyard chickens. Uh, I actually had a very long conversation with my Lyft driver this morning about this. <laughs> he was very curious. Um, so they are layers, which means we, they are, we are not raising them for, um, for, for meat. meat. We for are raising eggs. them for eggs. Ah. So we've had them for about five years. Great. Um, produce lots of eggs for us. They're very cool. amusing. Yeah. All right. And, um, and you're just eating all the eggs yourself. Or you've sold them. I share with my husband. Yeah, well, yeah, your family. Is <laughs> that's about it. That's it. All right. uh, but that, that's actually not the real reason I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you about uh, uh, what you're doing. Uh, what, what do you do? You got, you know, you got promoted since the last time I spoke <laughs> with you. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I work for Player Solutions, a small local consulting firm. Uh, I, I know a lot you've of smart met, people there. A lot of smart people there. And we recently did a little bit of restructuring to allow us to all kind of focus better on just one thing instead mm -hmm. of trying to everybody do everything. Right. And so um, I moved from being just the director at the Chicago office, which kind of involved a lot of different things, to being just people focused, but for the whole company. So now um, I guess you could call it something like a chief people officer. Right. Um, I'm not really sure what the, t the title, the appropriate title is. I'd much rather have a good job than a good t job title. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The job is great. And yeah. I, I, you have a clue to that because, um, or I had a clue when, uh, when I saw that you're speaking here at VS Live, and all of it focused on people and teams and communication and dynamics among the team members, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. All of, all of my talks have, have effectively derived from things that I've learned. Uh -huh by making mistakes, by learning, by figuring out the right ways to do it. Uh, well, let's, let's pick one of them. What they were talking, we were talking earlier off camera about team dynamics. Yeah. You actually did a talk on this, right? I do, I do. So I have a talk on, uh, essentially, you know, a lot of people will, will throw out terms like high performing teams or strong teams. Mm -hmm. And so I dig into what are the dynamics of a team that performs really well together and what are kind of the ingredients that make that work? Is there a secret that you can share with us? <laughs> well, I, honestly, the secret is, is, if I had to boil it down, it's paying attention. Um, making sure you're paying attention to what the other people on your team actually need to be okay. successful and thinking of them as kind of a whole human being and not just the person next to you slinging code. Well, that's good advice, whether in a corporate environment or outside right right yeah <laughs> not just software <laughs> yeah um so well so to paying attention give me an example of that so i uh, i think i pay attention to what people need but uh there's more context to that oh sure sure so we we dig in on a couple of things and and one of the things we spend some time on first is kind of the i call it the introvert myth because everyone says, oh, all software developers are introverts. Well, I was a developer for many, many years. I am not an introvert. You I am, don't seem to be. No, I am extremely extroverted, but in some situations, people would assume I was introverted when really what that is, is I am, uh, I am just very kind of shy and I have a lot of social anxiety. So social anxiety is more about fear of being judged harshly for being wrong or for mm. saying something that that isn't quite you know what people would expect of you and so in some situations when I'm not comfortable I'll be super quiet and people okay. tend to go oh if you're quiet you must be introverted um, and that's important because introverts and extroverts need very different work environments to be successful oh that's a, so I, it's funny you bring up uh, the words introvert and extrovert because I recently learned some definitions that were uh, in contrast to my perceived definition of those two. I always thought introverted and shy were synonyms. And I don't think that's true. And from what you just said, uh, you don't you'll agree with that. Um, and uh, I think the definition I just, in the last couple of years I heard was that extroverts draw energy from being with other people. They draw mm -hmm. energy from that interaction. Introverts, when in that interaction actually drains energy and they mm -hmm. need to be alone to recharge themselves. Yes. And that's, I think the key, to, that resonated with me. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting because there's there's also the difference. But like, it is it's very draining even for an extrovert. Like you, you and I both, we do a lot of conferences, and by right. the end of that conference, like you kind of need a weekend with right. no people talking to you. Right. <laughs> like sometimes I'm just like I need to I need to get away from people, but then I'm right back on as soon okay. as as soon as you know I'm there. 
Um, some of the other things that I found interesting, because my, my background's not psychology, it's computer science, mm -hmm. and I, I did some, you know, Wikipedia searching, some super, super scientific stuff. Um, but they also talk about the differences, like... My favorite science channel right? is Wikipedia. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they talk about the fact that extroverts tend to talk out loud and think out loud and hmm. we draw on boards and we create like okay. visual representations of things we're doing and we need other people involved in that process to okay. be creative hmm. whereas introverted people tend to kind of withdraw back into their mind and they think about things a lot okay. things will be visual ideas in their head hmm. Um, and they will think by themselves and then when they're ready they will bring those ideas forth whereas okay. I'm the opposite like if if, for instance, if, if my boss were to tell me, hey, we need, we need a new idea of how we get people ramped up on React or something like that. Yeah. And he said, could you go in your office and think about it for three, four hours and come back to It'll me with... bad advice Oh my gosh, I would be climbing the walls. Yeah. Whereas he'll just say, he, you know, he knows me well enough to know like he would never ask me to do that. But he would say, hey, I'd really love to hear some ideas on... X. Yeah. The first thing I do is I find someone who's available and I say, hey, could let's you brainstorm? Let's could you get in a room this. with me for let's about an hour? It. Let's whiteboard. And, and man, I'm so much more creative. Hmm. Um, but I'm also very attuned to the fact that I have coworkers where if I need them to do something, I might go, hey, do you want to go talk about the thing? But then with other people, I'll be like, oh, you know what? Hey, do you want to go spend a few hours kind of thinking through this, okay. and then you and I will sit down so, and talk so just, about it? Uh, identifying ahead of time what what type of personality they are, whether they're introvert, just, you know, it's, it's not really binary like that, but right, right. <laughs> whether they're, they tend to be more introvert, expert, and that that can really affect the way you communicate with them. And knowing totally. that ahead of time makes you a better manager. Yes, yes, and a better teammate. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask you that. So, what? Uh, how does this work? Where if you and I are peers and we're we're talking, is, is, is that uh, we're communicating with each other, we're working together? That... Yeah, it's it's not that different. I th I think if anything, the hard thing is is knowing for sure. And I think sometimes people jump to conclusions. Oh, that person is being really quiet right now. They must be introverted. When hmm. the reality might be, they're a little shy, okay. or they have social anxiety, or maybe they're in a psychologically unsafe environment. Like they've worked at a place in the past where speaking up gets you in trouble or trying something new and different can actually get you reprimanded and right. so it has nothing to do with how they prefer to work right. so um, they're one of the are, they're just sort of conditioned to this yes they're area. conditioned to it and so one of the things I, I bring up in the talk is I, I go through like what are some of the the different tools and tests and because you know there's all kinds of internet surveys that you can take but i've actually found a few that i found really helpful um myers-briggs is an obvious one that most mm -hmm. people are familiar with but there's an easier kind of more approachable website called 16 personalities mm -hmm. that takes the myers-briggs you know are you an enfp or an intj and it turns it into something more tangible than okay. like oh you're more like Oprah Winfrey or like for me it's um, for me it was like Barack Obama and Oprah and Daenerys Targaryen which I was very very amused that I had the same personality type as her. Um, it's probably your ruthlessness. Yeah <laughs> totally ruthlessness <laughs> but it, it came down to like you're charismatic you care deeply about the people around you, you okay. you're able to inspire people to follow okay. you um, and it breaks it down into things that are that are much more approachable than the scientific you know Myers-Briggs stuff. But it's great because I, I remember posting it internally um, on my Slack on Slack at work and just being like, oh, hey, it turns out that my Myers-Briggs personality is, is, the mother of dragons. is the mother of dragons. <laughs> and then everyone jumped in and was like, oh, here's mine and here's mine. <laughs> cool. And it was really cool because then everybody started going, oh, you and I, we have super similar ways of working together. And, and I found out, not surprisingly, we only have a handful of extroverts at my company. Um, but it was a really interesting way for me to then go, oh, now I have some really interesting information about what that person needs huh. for me to do, you know, with how I work with them to be more successful. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Do you have, does this uh, information affect when you, uh, when you actually build teams? I mean, uh, whether they're temporary or permanent? It can, together. it can, absolutely. And how, how do you do that? Is it, is it better to have everybody the same or is it better to have a lot of diversity or what's? So honestly, what's it, it's, it, so the, the knee jerk might be to try to find people that are similar, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're all similar. They're totally going to get along. Put them all in a room together. Probably less friction initially, I less imagine. Less friction initially, but imagine a team of software developers where everyone is introverted. 
Like uh, no one is, is going to kind of rally the team together and do okay. like whiteboarding brainstorming sessions. Everyone kind of goes off on their own and does their uh, own individual thinking. Um, to me, that's actually long-term more likely to cause friction. Uh, maybe you needed a cat herder in there. Yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and there, and there's, you know, there's truth to the whole like diversity of opinion. Cause not, it's not all introversion and extroversion. Some of it is you're much more analytical and yeah. you're much more yeah. tactical and you're much more thinking about how other people will interact with the software. So making sure that you're balancing that will actually give you a team that can produce better software for human yeah. consumption versus they just write really good code. Or really so. just a, a diversity in terms of culture. Right, or, exactly. Or, or, or gender or race or uh, uh, physical abilities because the, your user base right. has that diversity. Right. And having that uh, inside the company, inside of the people that are building the products might be the advantage. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting because it does mean that building teams is a lot harder, right? It's not yeah. just looking at gender diversity. It's not just looking for lifestyle diversity. Now you're also thinking about like, hey, you could have a team of, of you know, like half men and half women and feel like it's diverse, but then you find out they're all introverts, right? So mm -hmm. it's one more variable to take, in, to take into consideration to make sure that you're truly building a team that can play off each other's strengths and weaknesses. Hmm. This is a lot of, lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff, and that was, that was like one of like eight different <laughs> things that I talk about. Like Myers-Briggs is just one of them. There's all, all right, kinds well, of I, great I stuff. Want, let's see, we're about 12 minutes now. Yeah. Wanna, um, I, let, just go, go down the list of some of the things, and we'll, maybe we'll dive into one more. But oh, some of the other ones? Okay. I don't want to have time to go <laughs> so, deep into eight of them. Oh, absolutely. This, this episode. So there's there's Clifton Strengths Finder, which will tell you what your strengths are. Okay. Um, so in terms of like what are the areas you should dig into because you're good at it, there is disk analysis which is very similar. It's talking about how you interact with the world around you. What are your values and what motivates you? Mm. Um, there's something called the Nohari and Johari windows, which I found that one really fascinating, where it has a, a, a I can't remember exactly how many, but a list of descriptors. Mm. And you go in and pick the five or six words that you think describe you, mm -hmm. and then someone else picks the five or six words that they would use to describe you. And then it and it essentially turns that into how, how you, are you how self aware are you, yeah. um, and then I also have personal journey lines, um, and one that came up really recently that I just loved that if you don't mind maybe we'll dig in on this one oh, absolutely which is personal readme files, personal readme files okay right Go so on. I was at Agile Midwest a couple weeks ago and we were doing a talk on communication. And I, I brought up the fact that like when you have large teams like mm. in my case I have. 34, 35 people, mm. how could I possibly keep track of like that person's an extrovert and that person needs bright light to work well and that person needs like no email and all slack and someone stood up and said, we write personal readme files at my company. It's a description of yourself in a text It's a file? description of yourself in a text file that says, I'm an introvert. Um, I prefer to, to work the early shift and go home at four. Mm. My work-life balance is, is very strict versus I'm a little bit more flexible. And it effectively tells other people on your team how to interface with you. And I oh, was okay. like, that is freaking brilliant. So you implemented that. <laughs> so I'm starting to. I'm actually currently writing my own personal readme file. That's a good idea. And I have yeah. a couple coworkers who have offered to do this with me so that we could share, come up with a format, and then roll it out at the oh, company. Yeah. You should put the part about how you'll summon your draft. <laughs> if anybody opposes you. Absolutely, <laughs> and, absolutely. And, and raise and destroy and pillage the, 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 the uh, anyway, I'm, that's a tangent. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, well, is there anything else we haven't talked about that you think was really critical for people to hear? I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff in there. The, the biggest things we talk about are, are understanding your team building trust with your team so trust they're willing to share Absolutely. you with with you that information and part of the readme file and the journey lines is building that trust by telling your story um, and then the third piece that i have in there is having strong leadership whether it's a manager or just someone who's a leader without being a manager with a title sure and it talks yeah, about a lot of different kinds of leadership all there's so many skills that you need to work on like active listening and mediation and coaching and assessment that people often don't think about uh, I, as software developers is, are notorious for not thinking about what, what we sometimes call soft skills. Even just calling it soft skills. Is I know, they're so hard. Like what? 
<laughs> calling and, soft uh, skills seems so but, wrong. You know, we, we, we go to school and we study, you know, the, the hard science and we study mathematics and we study programming. They oh, yeah. There, there were no classes on active listening active or listening. collaboration in my computer science degree. It was right. all very hard technical focuses. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't have a computer science degree, but I know what you're saying. Right. <laughs> All right, and, and uh, are you still doing a lot of speaking? I am, I am. So I actually spoke at uh, VS Live San Diego last week. Uh -huh. I spoke at Agile Midwest the week before. I'm speaking at VS Live Chicago this week. And then next week, I'm speaking at St. Louis DevOps. So it has been a whirlwind oh, your three weeks must already. Miss you. Oh, I know, I know. Thankfully, we have some, some great neighbors who, who watch <laughs> them when we're traveling. So that, that makes our lives easier. Angela, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Hi, this is Angela Dugan. I'm at VS Live Chicago with David Giard. I always love having the opportunity to sit down with friends and talk about the people side of technology.